Hello, in this video we continue our discussion on specific discrete random variables. Last time we talked about Bernoulli uh, and geometric and binomial distributions. And today we continue the discussion. We talk about the negative binomial, uh, we talk about hypergeometric and Poisson distributions. So if you want to quickly review what we discussed last time, so Bernoulli P is, uh, you know, we say that X is a Bernoulli P random variable when x equals 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p. So to have a concrete example, we say that, assume that we have a coin where probability of heads is equal to p, and we toss that coin, and if the result is heads, we say x equals 1, and if the result is tails, then x is going to be 0. So whenever you have an experiment that has two possible outcomes, basically you can define a Bernoulli p uh, random variable. Now we also talked about geometric p. Well, let's say y equals ge we write it like this geometric p. And if I want to give an example of that, uh, consider the same coin. You toss it until you observe the first uh, heads. So we saw that last time probability mass function of y, probability that y equals k is going to be 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times p where k uh, it could be any number from 1, 2, 3, and so on. And finally, we talked about binomial uh, NP. So we can say, let's say, random variable Z. Again, consider the same, same coin. I toss it n times, parameters n, parameter n here. And Z is the total number of heads that I observe. So we write Z is binomial with parameters n and p. And again, as we saw before, probability that z is equal to k is equal, equal to n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k and k could be 0 1 up to n okay so the next random variable that we want to discuss the next distribution is the negative binomial or pascal distribution so again to have a specific example and to simplify the presentation let's present it using our coin so suppose I have a coin such that probability of heads equals to p. I toss the coin until I observe m heads, where m is a given natural number, m is, it could be 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then we define x as the total number of coin tosses in this experiment. So basically, this is a generalization of the geometric distribution. In the geometric distribution, we toss the coin until we observe the first head. Here we toss the coin until we observe the m heads. So first of all, what's the range of this random variable x, right, which we show usually by r sub x. Well, in order to observe m heads, you need to toss the coin at least m times. So x must be at least m. It could be m plus 1, it could be m plus 2, and so on. So that's the range of this random variable. So let's find its PMF, probability mass function. So the PMF of this random variable, p x of k, which is probability that x equals k is what? So let's look at our coin tosses and we want to find the probability of the event that x equals to k. Now suppose that I toss the coin until I observe the mth head. So this is going to be head and this is my mth head. We want to calculate the probability that x equals k. This event happens if two conditions hold. First of all, the last one must be a head. And second, from this k minus 1 coin tosses, I need to observe m minus 1 heads, right? So basically, I need to observe m minus 1 heads in k minus 1 coin tosses. So probability of this, because the coin tosses are independent, we can just multiply them. And the last one must be a head. So times probability of heads in the last coin toss. This is the probability that x equals k. Now, first of all, probability that the last one is head is just simply p. p is the probability of heads. What is the probability that I observe m minus 1 heads in k minus 1 coin tosses? I toss the coin k minus 1 times, what's the probability that I observe m minus 1 heads? 
This is exactly the binomial experiment. Remember, the binomial experiment says that I toss the coin n times, and I'm looking for the probability that I observe k heads. So, and that probability is n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. So here, my n is, uh, I have tossed the coin k minus 1 times, and my k is basically m minus 1. So I, I can just replace n by k and k by m minus 1 to write down this probability. And that probability is, in fact, k minus 1, choose m minus 1, p to the m minus 1, 1 minus p to the k minus 1 minus minus m minus 1. That's the probability. And of course, times p, the total probability we were looking for. Okay, so we conclude probability that x is equal to k is going to be, if we simplify this, you find k minus 1, choose m minus 1, p to the m, 1 minus p to the k minus m. And that's true for k equals m, m plus 1, m plus 2, and so on. That's the range of this random variable. So that's the PMF for the Pascal distribution, or uh, as we say, negative binomial. So we usually write it as X as distribution Pascal. Uh, so what are the parameters here? I touch the coin until I observe the mth head, right? So I have M is a parameter here, and of course P is the probability of heads is another parameter. And note that if I put m equals 1, then it's going to be exactly geometric. So Pascal 1 and p is the same as geometric p. Okay, so if I want to provide a kind of a formal definition for Pascal, here it is, a random variable x is said to be a Pascal random variable with parameters m and p if its PMF is given by this distribution here. Okay, so let's talk about the next distribution, which is the hypergeometric distribution. And here is a random experiment that uh, produces a, a hypergeometric distribution. So you have a bag that contains B blue marbles and red uh, R red marbles. So it's a little bit different than the previous one, so we don't have a coin anymore. So we have a bag full of marbles, B blue marbles, and R red marbles. Of course, I should mention that again in applications, you might look at many different scenarios. You might be sampling from a population, so let's say you have B males and R females and things like that. So here, again, for simplicity of presentation, let's talk about marbles and a bag. So I have a bag that contains B blue marbles and red uh, R red marbles. So I choose k marbles at random from the bag, and x is a uh, number of blue marbles in my sample. Okay, so, and of course my sampling is without replacement, that's the assumption here. So I cannot repeat, you know, I cannot choose uh, the same marble twice. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, find the range of uh, this random variable x. So I have b blue marbles. And I have R red marbles. First of all, um, note that X cannot be larger than B because I did, the total number of blue marbles is B, so X must be less than or equal to B. X is the total number of blue marbles that I choose. X must also be less than or equal to K because the total number of marbles that I choose is K, so X cannot be larger than K. Also, if I choose x blue marbles and my total sample size is k, I choose k marbles, which means that there are k minus x red marbles, right? That I that I have chosen. And this number must also be less than or equal to the total number of red marbles, which is r. And of course x must be larger than or equal to zero. Now, if you put all of these uh, conditions together, uh, we found we find out that the range of random variable x uh, is going to be, it must be larger than 0 
then it must be larger than k minus r so this number this is the minimum possible value for x and then it could be this value plus 1 plus 2 and the largest value is a minimum of you know, k and b so this is the range of the random variable x okay so let's find the probability that x is uh, equal to specific value in other words let's find its pmf probability mass function so what we are interested in is probability that x is equal to x the random variable x is equal to lowercase x so this is basically the probability that i choose x blue marbles This is one of the problems that we can just choose uh, use counting arguments. This is an event A. I want to find the probability of an event A, the event A. Okay, so first of all, what is S? The total number of ways I can choose K marbles from B plus R marbles. This is B plus R choose K, as we saw before. In how many ways I can make this choice such that there are B blue marbles? Well, I need to choose B blue marbles. Sorry. In how many ways I can choose X blue marbles? Well, I can. I need to choose X blue marbles out of total uh, the uh, total of B blue marbles, and then I need to choose the remaining K minus uh, X marbles must be red out of. I have R red marbles, so this is a multiplication principle. So the conclusion that is that this probability is basically b choose x times r choose k minus x divided by b plus r choose k. So this is the uh, probability mass function for hi the hypergeometric random variable. So we write x is a hypergeometric random variable. And note that there are three parameters here, the number of blue marbles, the number of red marbles, and also the number of marbles that I choose from the bag, which is K. And again, if I want to provide a formal definition, uh, we say that X is a random, uh, a random variable X is said uh, to be a hypergeometric random variable with parameters B, R, and K, and we write it uh, like this. If its range is, this is the, what I found uh, above, and its probability mass function is given by this uh, formula that we found above. Okay, so let, let's talk about the last distribution that we need to talk about, and that's the Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution is a very important one, and is usually used in scenarios when, where we are counting the occurrences of certain events in an interval of time or space. So, for example, when you're counting, let's say, the number of emails that you might receive in a day or counting the number of packets uh, that uh, are received at a certain point in a communication network or let's say I'm counting the number of customers that are arriving at a store so there are many different scenarios and a Poisson distribution is a usually good model for these kind of events and why is that true so let's talk a little bit about that uh, and using that you will introduce the Poisson distribution so suppose that um, you know let's say let's talk about the example of counting the number of customers so suppose that i have a store and i'm counting the number of customers that they arrive uh, in a certain hour right so let's say i am looking from time zero to time one one hour and i want to know how many customers i will have suppose that from my experience from past days I know that the, num the average number of customers per hour is around uh, lambda. So lambda could be, let's say, 20 customers per hour, something like that. So lambda is a fixed number larger than zero. It's a real number larger than zero. And it is the average number of the customers that you observe in an hour. And you have there a random variable x, which is the total number of uh, customers that uh, arrive, let's say, tomorrow from... Uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. right you choose a certain hour and you want to count the number of customers and based on the average 
uh, of the other days you see you kind of expect around lambda customers in one hour so x is a num random variable because we haven't yet observed how many customers we will have okay so to solve this problem i look at it this way let's divide this one hour period to small intervals of time uh, let's divide it to n uh, interval. This interval length could be, let's say, one second, for example. So we divide the total one hour period to 3600 seconds, for example, and each time interval is one second. And you model your problem like this. You say, in each second, I will get a customer or no customer. So it's like tossing a coin, where p probability of observing a coin is lambda divided by n. So you will say that in one hour I receive uh, lambda customers on average so in one second I receive lambda over uh, 3600 customers in one second so so it looks like that in each one second interval it looks like I'm t tossing a coin and that coin the probability of success or the probability of heads is lambda over n p and I either get a customer or not uh, get a customer. You could argue that uh, the fact that I get a customer in this uh, interval is some, in some sense independent that I receive a, a customer in an, another interval. So these, it looks like I'm tossing a coin n times. Basically, I'm repeating a Bernoulli experiment uh, n times. And all exp these experiments are independent. So in some sense, I can say that I am tossing a coin n times. And I'm looking at the number of uh, successes, the, the total number of heads. But we have seen this distribution before. I toss a coin n times. I am interested in the number of heads. How many heads do I get? This is exactly the binomial distribution. So in particular, I can write the probability that x equals k. This is simply n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. Uh, in this case, p is equal to lambda over n. Okay? So this is nothing but the binomial distribution. Now, in this specific example, we assume that n is very, very large. So, in fact, we can find the limit of this thing, the limit as n goes to infinity. Right? And if you do that, this is just an, an algebra problem, or let's say a calculus problem because it's a limit problem. If you do that, you will find out this limit is going to be e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k, divided by k factorial. And this is uh, this calculation is, uh, has been done in the book. So if you are interested, you can just refer to the book. So, and this is the po formula for Poisson distribution. So... In some sense, the Poisson distribution is nothing more, more than the, a limit case of the binomial distribution. So we just stated as a theorem here, if x is a binomial random variable with parameter n and p equals lambda over n, where lambda is a fixed value, then for any k, we have the limit of px of k, the probability that x is equal to k, is given by this formula, which is the Poisson formula. And we can basically provide a formal definition for a Poisson uh, random variable. We say that x is a random variable, or a random variable x is said to be a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda when we write it as this, x is Poisson with parameter lambda if its range is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and its probability mass function is given by this formula here that you found. Okay, so that was just a kind of an idea why the Poisson uh, formula is, looks like this. But in practice, we need to use it. So let's look at an example uh, so that we learn how to use this uh, Poisson distribution. Here's an example. The number of emails that I get in a weekday can be modeled by Poisson distribution with an average of 0.2 emails per minute. Okay, so the first question is, what is the probability that I get no emails in an interval of length 5 minutes? And the second question is, what is the probability that I get more than three emails in an interval of length 10 minutes? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution. 
Okay, let's first solve part one. What is the property that I get no emails in an interval of length five minutes? So let x be the total number of emails that I receive in five minutes. And the assumption is that it's a Poisson uh, distribution. So lambda is the average number of uh, emails that I receive in these five minutes. How do we find lambda? Well, here it says that uh, the average number of emails that I receive is 0.2 emails per minute. So if I receive 0.2 emails per one minute, then on average I receive 0.2 times 5 emails per five minutes, which is 1. So here lambda equals 1. So we can say x is Poisson with parameter lambda equals 1. And we are interested in probability that x equals zero i receive no email so it's px of zero just plug into the formula is e to the minus lambda lambda to the zero divided by zero factorial um, by the way zero factorial is one uh, lambda to zero it becomes one so it's just e to the minus lambda which is lambda is one is e to the minus one so one over e that's the probability so part two what is the probability i get more than three emails in an interval of length 10 minutes. So let's define y as the total number of emails that I receive in 10 minutes. So what's uh, lambda here? Again, it's just 0.2 times 10, which is equal to 2. And we are interested in probability that y is larger than 3. And it is a little bit easier if you do it 1 minus probability that y less than or equal to 3, which is going to be 1 minus probability that y equals 0, minus probability that y equals 1, minus probability that y equals to 2, minus probability that y equals to 3. And in general, we know that probability that y equals k is e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k divided by k factorial. So we just plug in. This probability becomes 1 minus uh, e to the minus 2, 2 to the power of 0, 0 factorial, minus e to the minus 2, 2 to the 2, sorry, 2 to the 1, divided by 1 factorial, minus e to the minus 2, 2 to the 2, divided by 2 factorial, and minus uh, e to the minus 2, 2 to the 3, and divided by 3 factorial. So you can just do the calculation and find out what this value is. Okay, thank you.